just look at give us a little bit of insight as to how the training camp is going over there you're dealing with conditions and what the mood in camp is like yeah it's been uh, great so far obviously it's beautiful here and i think it's been amazing for us to kind of be able to adjust to the heat and get a sense of what it's going to be like in georgia so obviously it's been really hot here training but it's been good for us to kind of get that into our systems and everything and yeah, the mood's been great. Everyone's really excited, uh, looking forward to kind of just being back together and getting a, another game under our belt. So when the, 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 the men's team were in Yerevan a couple of weeks ago, they, they struggled with the heat. After that game against the Philippines on Sunday, can you give us an idea of how difficult it is to play in those conditions? Yeah, as I said, like I think it was great that we were able to get that game to be able to see, obviously, you kind of think you know how hot it's going to be. And when you're here, you realize how uh, brutal it can be. So I think we did a great job managing the heat. And obviously, we have a great staff that's uh, preparing us with waters and towels and all that. So I think we're taking all the necessary steps to uh, be prepared the best way that we can. Yeah, and you'd imagine as a result of that, substitutions will have to play a big part in the game against Georgia because, you know, just to keep fresh legs coming on. How did you feel that the substitutes when they came on on Sunday, what impact did you feel they made? Yeah, I think obviously we work really hard on our game plan and trainings and doing the 11 v 11. So I think everyone knows their role, whether it's in starting 11 or coming off the bench. So I think the subs did an absolutely great job kind of filling in and knowing what uh, they were meant to do. And as you said, I think that's really important, especially in the heat, to have uh, depth on the bench and everyone be prepared to uh, play their part for sure. And just last one for me. We have the, the World Cup qualifier now against uh, against Georgia coming up, and then you have two more in September. How How much focus and how important is it for you to get the win against Georgia to set you off in good stead for, for those two more to come. Yeah, as I said, I think we're just taking it one game at a time and obviously our full focus is on this Georgia game and we know how important it is to get the win and keep moving in the right direction. So I think everyone's working extremely hard uh, this week and putting in all the right prep to take those steps to be as ready as possible for uh, the game on Monday. Thanks so many. Good luck in the game. Thank you. You okay with her? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Phil Egan. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Courtney. Hi. How are you doing? Just uh, about your own role in the team. Obviously, at the start of the campaign, you know, it felt like the, the number one spot was very much up for grabs. Vera Pau picked you. And you can see just game by game, you seem to be growing in confidence. So when Vera told you that you were going to start that, that Sweden game in Tala, how much of a, a confidence booster was it? Yeah, I think, I mean, I've said it a million times before, we obviously have a great goalkeeper squad and I think we're working every day to be the best and obviously be ready when our name's called and when we're needed. So I think that's kind of what I've tried to focus on, just doing my best in training, showing myself, and then when I get my chance in the game to kind of uh, show what I know that I'm capable of. So I think it's obviously great to go out against a team like Sweden and put in a solid performance that definitely helps to boost the confidence. And like I said, we're building something as a team here. And then it's nice to personally continue to build alongside that as well. Goalkeeper is that position where, you know, you, you might have to wait a while to get a chance. You have your chance now, but just in terms of you, you touch on something there with the other goalkeepers, there's always seems to be a very, close relationships or relationship rather with goalkeepers almost like that the goalkeepers union where you know they're all rooting for you yeah I think obviously it's just such a unique position and the only other people that know what it's like to play the position are the ones that are also playing it so I think that obviously creates the unique bond within the goalkeeper group because they know what it's like to play in those games or make saves and things like that. So I think that just helps us to continue to be close and to support each other. And everyone knows whoever's playing that the rest will be there to back each other up and things like that. And just the last one for me, in terms of your position at club level, obviously you got a couple of games towards the end of the season. Number one for Ireland, how do you become number one for the club? And, and is that something that if it doesn't happen, do you start looking elsewhere? 
Yeah, I think obviously getting uh, game minutes at club is so important. It keeps, uh, helps keep you fresh and obviously ready for the international game. So that's something that's, yeah, really important for me to be able to not only get game time here, but to be able to get game time at the club level for sure. Okay, well, best of luck next week. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, McDowell. Thanks, Gareth. Hi, Courtney. How are you? Good. How are you? Rehydrating there, I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, just you, you talked about, um, you know, playing at club level there. Obviously, for, for most of the squad, they finished up playing at club level about a month ago. I know there's a number of players playing in the States and some in the WNL. What's been the challenge like to, to keep your fitness? And is it maybe a bit different as a goalkeeper where kind of sharpness is, is so key? What has been the challenge for, for you over the last kind of a uh, couple of weeks coming into the camp? Yeah, I think obviously we knew that coming in that there was going to be a fair amount of people out of season. And that's why it was so important for us to get this time here in Turkey to kind of find that rhythm and get that sharpness back. And then I think obviously we're all professionals here and kind of know what it takes in the off season to keep ticking over and do what's necessary to obviously be ready. It's important to take your rest, but I think me as well as all the girls have been working really hard um, at home to uh, find settings to train and obviously keep that sharpness up, as you said, to be ready for an important match. And the, the last time you played Georgia, um, you know, there's obviously the record score. Um, it'll be a different challenge uh, in this game. I'm sure you, you know you'll be busier and there'll be no complacency when you come up against the Georgia side. You'll definitely be stronger than the one you faced in, in Tala. Yeah, I think everyone is obviously aware of that, that it's going to be a stronger squad and obviously a different challenge playing away from home at a pitch that we don't obviously know, like we know Tala. So I think everyone is taking that under their belt and obviously not being complacent and doing everything that we need to do to be as ready as we can be for the game. And just one more for me, please. Um, the... The world rankings were released during the week and, and Ireland up 27th, the highest ranking ever, you know, on the back of, of some great results, including the, you know, the one all draw in Sweden. It must be, there must be great confidence within the camp. And, uh, you know, as you come into these games with the, the prize that you're trying to get to, to, to World Cup, but in terms of kind of confidence within the camp, when you see that reflected in the likes of the rankings and obviously they come from the good results that you guys have had. Yeah, I think as we've said, and you guys have said, we're obviously trying to build something here. And obviously with some of the resu results we've gotten, we're taking steps in the right direction. So it's obviously great to kind of get that recognition in the world rankings. And I think we're taking that, as you said, as a confidence boost, but not being complacent and thinking the job's done, knowing that we still have uh, a way to go and we need to stay focused uh, at, about the task on hand. Super. Thanks, Mel. Best of luck in the game. No worries. Thank you. Emma Duffy. Hey, Courtney. How are you keeping? Hey, Emma. Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, you see about the goalkeeping squad there. Um, maybe just a word for Nisha McAloon. Uh, I don't know if you've kind of played with her much at international level, if she's been in the mix, um, but she's doing so well at Durham. Uh, a really good addition to, to the crew there. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, I think I've been maybe at one or two camps with Nisha before home base so obviously it's great to have her in for a full camp here and a competitive game coming up she's as I said as you said been a great addition and it just shows the quality of goalkeepers we have here and obviously that we have to keep working and you know there's people that are pushing into the squad so it's been really really nice to have her and she's good crack to have around the camp also. Good stuff and you know you talk about that I suppose competition but like that friendly rivalry as well that seems to be the case all over the team it's not just the goalkeeping squad and like that's that's what you need to, to push on to the next level yeah I think obviously everyone wants to be playing but everyone also wants the team to be winning and doing well so I think everyone knows that they're playing a role in that no matter what it is and I think in every position, as you said, everyone's pushing to be better to play and also push the people that might be in front of them to obviously get the best results we can and to get to where we want to be. 
Absolutely. And then last one for me, Courtney, just on your on your club, club duty, uh, I know your whole focus is on uh, international at the minute, but am I right in saying that your deal's up at Everton this summer? I could be wrong there, but was it a one-year contract you signed last year? Yeah, that's correct. Cool. So, like, I suppose it's probably all up in the air a little bit at the minute and you're not going to tell us, but uh, do you have any kind of future plans in place? Are you pretty happy at Everton or or what's the, the story there? Yeah, I think, as you said, I'm just trying to focus right now on, on the game here and do everything I can for Ireland. And then um, I'm working very hard to uh, be in the best position for myself uh, at the club level as well. Super. Thanks so many, Courtney. Best of luck next week. Thank you. Andrew Dempsey. Hey, Courtney. Just, sorry, one from me. Um, look, I know you, you mentioned one game at a time, and I know it's, it's quite cliche, but in terms of the, the overall goal with this campaign, look, qualification probably is the goal. What would that mean to you? Obviously, you're, given your backstory and given, I suppose, how this Irish team has, has developed over the years, what would it mean to you to actually go off and qualify for a major tournament now? Yeah, I think when everyone starts playing football, they dream about being able to play in a World Cup. And obviously, coming from a small country like Ireland that has so much passion, it would just mean the world to me and to all the girls. So I think it goes without saying how how big it would be for all of us. All right, Courtney, thanks, man. No worries. Okay, uh, Mark McCadden. Hey, how are you doing, Courtney? How's things? Um, come here. I mean, obviously you expect a bigger challenge from Georgia than they posed in Talat, but at the same time, it's going to be a very different game to the one in Sweden. Can you just uh, talk to us a little bit about your memories of, of the Sweden game and, and I suppose what can only be described as, as, as one of, you know, a, a performance of a lifetime? Yeah, I think obviously you don't really think about it like that when you're playing or when it's happening. I think you're really focused on kind of the task at hand and you take everything as it comes at you. So I don't think I was really like realizing or looking at the bigger picture until after the game. I think there's full focus, was full focus on getting the result. And as I said before, just doing whatever is necessary for the team, whether that's making one save or whether that's making 10 saves. So I think that I really just tried to be that calm influence in the back and take some relief off the off the back line and just do anything I could to help us get a result. But you have had time to reflect on it. What are your kind of impressions of it or what are your thoughts on it now? Yeah, obviously I'm really proud, proud of the team and proud of myself. And I think it was a great atmosphere there to play in front of so many fans. And that's just something that you just don't take for granted and you realize how special it is to be able to put in a performance like that in front of a crowd. And obviously, as I said, uh, get important points moving forward uh, in the qualification process. Is it, is it strange then going into a game where, you know, obviously the points are as important, but the, you won't have that kind of atmosphere. The, the crowd won't be anywhere near as big. Um, the, I suppose they, they, they kind of, um, match that you'll be having in terms of uh, busyness, so it won't be anywhere near that. Is that is that a strange kind of thing to to go from that one to this one? Um, I don't think it's too strange. I think everyone realizes how important all the games are, whether there's tons of fans or whether there's no fans at all. So I think everyone kind of um, knows that these games are really important, no matter who's in uh, who's in the crowd. And then, like I've said before, the, um, um, sorry, <laughs> the um, being a goalkeeper, you could be called upon to make one save or 20 saves. So I think it's just staying in the moment, staying focused on the task and just being ready for what the game kind of has in store for you, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, in a, in a way then, is this game even more difficult um, in that you just have to be so switched on all the time? Yeah, I think, as a goalkeeper, you realize how important that concentration and that focus is because you could have so many minutes where you don't have anything to do and then you could be called upon for 10 seconds where you need to be at the top of your game. So I think that's something that we talk about and we train a lot. So be ready for that. Well, sorry, what was the reaction when you went back to Everton um, after the Sweden game? I mean, uh, did, uh, sorry, excuse me, ignorance here. did you get any game time at all or... or... Uh, uh, did you like how, how did how did your teammates and how did the coaches react when you came back? 
Yeah, I think uh, the environment at Everton is great. Everyone's uh, really supportive and wants everyone to do well when they go away to their respective international duties. So everyone was really, really happy for me. And obviously there's a few Swedish girls on the team too. So it was kind of fun to talk about it with them. And yeah, I did end up getting minutes at the end of the season last year, uh, played uh, three games after that international break after that Sweden game to finish Brilliant. off. Brilliant. And sorry, last one for me is, I mean, this obviously, um, regardless of where you're playing next year, this is, a, this is a chance to kind of really kind of, again, put yourself in the shop window. Sorry, I couldn't hear you there. I was saying, regardless, I'm uh, not sure. Yeah, I think obviously, you know, in the international game, everyone's watching and seeing things like that. So yeah, I would definitely say it's a chance to show yourself, but more important is just to be there for the team and get the result and then worry about all that other stuff later. Cool. Thanks and best of luck. Thank you. On Kowser. Uh, hey, Courtney, how are you doing? I um, was just looking, I know we're all talking about that the heat in Gori is going to be high, um, but also looking at the weather forecast, they're also expecting heavy rain and thunder and lightning at game time. Like, as a goalkeeper, what does that make a difference to you? Like, because the ball might be wet. Yeah, I think obviously <clears throat> there's a lot that goes into the preparation, but at the end of the day, you can't really control the weather and or control the certain factors. So I think the main thing is we've all played in crazy hot weather. We've all played in crazy rain. I used to play in snow in my college days. So I think you kind of take it all on board and just prepare the best you can for whatever the conditions will be. Obviously it might pose a different challenge, but I think we'll be ready for that. Yeah. And then, um, well, I know it will be a different game in Tala. Could it also, like, we're talking about it, like what's going to happen, what's going to be like for the goalkeeper, but do you expect it to be similar where it is going to be just Ireland going for it all the time as well? Like maybe not getting 10, 11 goals, but still being able to win comfortably. Yeah, I think obviously we're preparing and doing our best to put in the best performance and score goals and uh, kind of go at Georgia as we did in the first leg. So I think everyone's feeling positive and trying to just get as ready as we can to be able to put in that type of performance. All right. Thanks, Courtney. No worries. Thank you, Kelly. Good morning. Um, topics already covered, but just a couple of things. Just on Everton, I'm wondering how you balance your next career decision. Um, as you said, you got in ahead of Sandy for the last couple of games, but you know it was a pretty calamitous season. You know the club with whatever 27 managers and a revolving door there. How do you kind of balance that because you're into WSL as well? So there are a few things. I'm just kind of wondering where your where your headspace is and you as you ponder your next move, which probably could be the most important one of your career. Yeah, I think obviously there's so many different factors that go into choosing a club or choosing where you want to play. As you said, it could be things like game time or things like managers, all sorts of things where the league and all that. So I think that's definitely something that I'm considering and obviously trying to weigh all those different factors and see kind of what's the best for me and obviously kind of make my decision based off of that if that makes sense sure yeah i mean i presume you're craving some sense of stability i mean is that is that possible do you see at everton at the moment given what happened last season yeah i think obviously everyone wants to be in a stable environment uh and things like that so um yeah i could definitely definitely see that at everton so i think that's something to definitely consider when i'm making my decision this summer just briefly on the um, goalkeeping piece with, with your coach there and Vera and obviously your colleagues, um, as briefly possibly as possible for the ignorant public and the ignorant uh, deliverer voice of the public here, if you're preparing for a game in which you may only have one thing to do, what does that preparation look like? Yeah, I think obviously when you play different opponents, you're obviously focusing on different things and seeing what their kind of threats would be like. Obviously, 
we know that Georgia is really dangerous um, in the counter attack, in the counter attack, and maybe balls over the top and things like that. So that's something that we talk about and try to maybe focus on in training. And then obviously the structure and the the usual things we do stay the same, but then there's little adjustments to kind of talk about the opposition as well. Yeah, no, just from, from your own headspace, sorry, maybe if I narrow it down, if you're preparing for a game in which you may only have one thing to do because the other team are not going to be attacking, it's going to be a 9, 10, 11 nil win for your team. How do you prepare for a game like that when concentration for 90 minutes is all you have to do and you may only be asked to touch the ball once? Yeah, I think the in terms of preparation for games, I would say it's pretty similar. I try to stick to kind of a routine and prepare the same way, no matter what the game's going to be like from like a mental standpoint, just getting myself ready. And then obviously, I think playing the position for a while, you get used to how important that focus and that concentration is. And then speaking about it uh, in camp definitely helps to kind of prepare you more for what the game might be like. If that answers your question. Lovely, thank you. No worries. Gavin? Um, Courtney, how, how are you? How's it going? Very good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I, I just want to go back to Gothenburg very briefly, if you don't mind. Um, how much did that performance do for your own personal self-confidence? Yeah, I think I've said it before, but as you've been playing for a while, you have that inner belief in yourself always and just kind of know what you're capable of and what you can do. But obviously it's nice to put in performances that kind of show that or prove that as well. So I think it's kind of all just building blocks and moving in the right direction and saying you have the tools and capabilities to be here, which is uh, reassuring and Nice to see you. But did that game need to happen for that to be kind of, uh, I, I believe you have to have self-confidence to perform the way you did, that day, obviously. But did that performance and that result have to happen for you to, uh, to reinforce everything that you're kind of saying to yourself over and over again? Was this the evidence? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think you, as an athlete, like need to look for concrete evidence all the time. I think you kind of have to create that within yourself and kind of have that, desire and that inner belief no matter what might be happening around you so obviously like I said it's nice to maybe have some evidence but I wouldn't say it's necessary for me to believe in myself to have that if that makes sense yeah, yeah and like what was it more is there any way you can enjoy an experience like that or it's just far too stressful <laughs> um I think maybe afterwards you try to enjoy it a little before moving on to the next game but yeah, during the moment, you're probably, as I said before, you're not really thinking about it. You're too focused on the game and the task at hand to, or maybe stressed about what's coming at you to really think about it. Who are the key people, either outside the squad or in the squad, that are kind of help you with your mental preparation in that regard? Because if you don't have that right, you will make mistakes, obviously. Yeah, I think obviously all of us have that guidance at our club or maybe from friends and family at home. And then obviously within the squad, the staff here is super helpful with uh, preparing us for these moments, whether it's for the goalkeepers, Jan Willem, the goalkeeper coach, or obviously Tom and Vera more specifically with the outfield players more. I think we have a really good environment here that's trying to, yeah, just help us be the best and prepare the best we can. Great, thanks. Good luck in Georgia. Thank you.